And um, that last verse there, being so minded of other believers, of other brethren, especially of other workers, he's saying, you are our rejoicing, and even as we are your rejoicing, that level of love towards other people doing the work of the Lord, that's where we need to be at. Were you really genuinely, in sincerity, in truth, care about other people to where you are feeling what they're going through, right? And, and empathizing with them and sympathizing with them and their troubles and praying for them and being concerned for them and, and wanting to know how they're doing and, and just, just being there one for another. This is the, the, the love of the brethren that needs to be there. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Flip over to chapter 7. The Apostle Paul cares deeply about all the churches that he writes his epistles unto. And, and it's very evident that he cares about these people genuinely and deeply. And he's expressing that concern and that comfort with the people here while he's warning them and everything else. Um, he's explaining to them that, that you know, you're going to go through a hard time, but we're here for you. Verse number four of 2 Corinthians 7 reads, Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. And he's going to explain why. Why are you exceeding joyful in all your tribulation? For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And that's another important verse to remember. When you have people, people that are perceived to be very strong men of God, I would look at the Apostle Paul as a very strong man of God. Would you not? I mean, like, would anybody doubt that the Apostle Paul could be viewed as a very strong man of God? I mean, he did a lot for the Lord. But even he is saying, without, we're, I mean, there's fightings going on all around us. There's attacks, there's persecutions. Within, we're fears. Now, we know what the Scripture teaches. We know that we shouldn't be afraid of anything but the Lord. That is right. We should have no fear. But we're still human. Just because we know we shouldn't be afraid of things doesn't mean you're never going to be afraid of anything. And he's admitting, hey, without we're fighting, within we're fears. Again, the reason why the comfort is so important. Because when you see a man of God, even someone who looks like they're very strong, they are rock, they're not going to move. You don't know what's going on inside of those people. Outwardly, yeah, they're, they're plugging away. But you know what? It takes its toil on the inside. There's stress, anxiety, fear, you know, all kinds of things going on inside while you're fighting this battle, while you're standing and opposing the forces that would oppose the Lord. And um, it could be nerve-wracking. And the Apostle Paul is basically commending them here for, um, for the comfort that he, that he has. And he says in verse number six, Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. So it so said we received comfort. Comfort how? Through a man. Through Titus. Titus coming to visit. Titus coming in. To be that comfort, he comforted them. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. So it wasn't even just Titus, but the, the news that Titus brought. So not only was Titus standing with Paul, which was a great comfort to Paul. He also found out that, hey, the whole church at Corinth, they're mourning, they're praying, they're concerned about you, they care about you, they love you, they want to know how you're doing. Titus brings that news with him to the Apostle Paul, and Paul hears this stuff. Wow, what a great comfort. He's got a whole church behind him. 
as he's maybe locked up in a prison cell somewhere or stuck some other foreign place and he's got all of these fightings without him and fears within and it seems like there's nobody by him and everyone's forsaken him. Titus shows up and he says, hey, you're not alone. And by the way, the whole church is worried about you. We're concerned about you. We're praying for you. We love you, Paul. Amen. That does a lot to lift the spirits. That does a lot to give someone the energy and the courage and the fortification to just keep moving forward, to keep doing what's right, not to quit, not to get out of the battle. Because let's face it, people oftentimes will quit the fight because it just gets too hard for them. And they get weary and worn out. And I think we could reduce the number of people that would back out of the fight if we had more people encouraging and comforting those that are in the heat of the battle.